Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned Svelte Kit Series. Today we are going to be looking at a Svelte library. Uh, something a little different. We're going to be looking at the Svelte Motion uh, package. So we'll go ahead and just kind of explore a couple of their examples. And we'll walk through their website just a little bit. Um, and let's just dive right in. Let's go ahead and take a look. at. So we have our application here. And I just added forward slash motion. So this is within our Svelte kit app here. Make this bigger real quick. And I just uh, took some of their examples directly from their website and I threw it on uh, to this page in Svelte kit. So for example, we have this one for animation turn here. These ones need to be reset. So if I go re refresh here, you can see they all have their own little unique animations. Uh, use animation wasn't working. This animate shared laid out example. This drag example where it drags into this given space. And this uh, motion config or this other motion one wasn't working. Layout. So just a few examples. So let's go ahead and take a look really briefly at their code. And then we'll go ahead and look at their website. So the website is svelte-motion.gradientdescent.de. And if we go over here, it is written by, here's to buy me a coffee for her, uh, Michael Lucht. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's a very fantastic little library. And you could see how he, he posts, uh, ports libraries from React to Svelte. So if you go to the Svelte Motion introduction here, it is a Svelte-based or based on Framer Motion, which I am assuming is a React-based one. So let's go ahead and just take a look at some of these examples here. So if we go to basic animation first, uh, the only bit of my code here is this button. I just made sure to match existing styles. So first thing is we're going to import Motion SSR from the Svelte Motion library. That has been installed into our dev dependencies here. And then we're just going to go ahead and have a motion tag. I have an I of zero. It's going to have an animate attribute. It's going to say rotate I. And then the transition, we're going to give it uh, 0.5 seconds. And then say let motion. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and give it some kind of div within it. And say use that motion. And then here in our button, we're just whenever we click it, we're going to rotate 45 degrees. So we're going to say uh, I of 45. We can obviously, you know, change this if we wanted it to be 30 degrees here. And then, you know, whatever we want to do here. So, and then of course this box is just defining that box that you're seeing here. So that's very simple for the first episode, uh, first example. The second example has a lot more. Um, animations here because there's four different boxes. So we're going to import again the source motion motion SSR. This is a, something that he did note in the library that he you know he's trying to get it to work like this, but it doesn't currently do so. Um, he's got some variants to fight here. The first one is just going to say animate rotate 360 degrees or two seconds. So this is exactly like the last one. Um, with the exception that the first one, we're defining that I as we go. So this one is just going to rotate one time, or I guess uh, duration is twice here. Um, transition prop. So we have this transition prop of ease out. So that's the difference between this one and this one. So I'll, I'll go ahead and refresh these multiple times so we can compare them and see them. So just watch this one versus this one. So it's just kind of, uh, yeah, it is a single rotation, but just the way the easing has worked. So I'm sure he's got multiple easings to find. The next one here is going to go ahead and take in a rotation of 0, 360 degrees, 45 degrees. And for each of those, it's going to go ahead and have a different amount of timing for each. So you could see it's really fast, and then it's back. So that's uh, this one right here. And then finally, the variance one that has this variance up here, 
visible uh, one and then zero uh, X. So it looks like it's moving in from being uh, full opacity to not. And it's going to go ahead and have uh, zero as the X value. And then it's going to transition to the negative 1,000 here uh, with hidden. So we'll go ahead and refresh that so you can see that last one. And it comes in. And it moves. Use animation ones, um, both use animation and use motion value examples. I was not able to get to work. I'm not going to even show these on this site. I'll show them on the example site. And uh, maybe you all can figure out how to get them to work in Silkit. The animate shared layout. This is this one here. It's kind of cool. It's got this little ring around it that has a nice little bounce to it. And it changes colors as it transitions. So let's take a look at that. So here he has a component called Animate Shared Layout. He's got the four different colors defined here. You have a selected color. It's going to default to the first one. And the spring is going to be, I guess, these little bounce here. And so it uh, shows stiffness and damping. It's going to be a wrapper around some elements. And we have a list. We're going to iterate through all of our colors here. And then we're going to set our selected color to the, that background. And if we have a selected one, it's going to go ahead and use that motion. And it's going to go ahead and make sure we have a nice little um, the border color. It's the same color, that transition from the spring up here. And then down here, we have defined the stylings of each of these for the unordered list, the items themselves, which are each of the four blocks here, these four round circles, and then the outline, uh, which is the outline around it. So those are nice. It's very, it's a cool little transition. Uh, especially like how the spring works. So there's probably different uh, types of these that you could probably pass in as the transition as well. Next up, we have the drag example. Again, this is one where you can drag outside the line and it's gonna pull back in. Let's go ahead and take a brief moment to look at that. This is gonna use motion again. It's an area and this one has a bind this to this certain specific area and this has a drag and drag constraints and so the constraints are the given area that have been defined which is defined with css and then of course they're both going to use the let motion and use motion so this drag attribute and drag constraints will define the fact that this is um draggable and has to be pulled within back into this area. So that's pretty cool. And then he has unselectable as a CSS class on here as well, just to make sure that you see the selection is none of these. And one more example to take a look at here before we start looking at the docs is motion config. So we have flex layout here. If I click it, we have a float layout. Like it, we have a grid layout. So, and it's kind of nice little transitions between between them. So, and then he said he had based on this uh, by Lehan uh, tweet. Usually, the import should just work this way. He said again, um, and then but we're going to import these individually. So we have animate presence, animate shared layout, which we used uh, up here and then motion config. So we have the three radio buttons here, and we're binding a group for the layout. And this is going to define which it is, A, layout B, layout C. We're going to have a just a little brief wrapper around the whole thing uh, for layout sake, and then motion config here. So this is going to say what the duration is for changing between these layouts. So if we wanted to like increase it to be really, really slow, we could. Um, seems kind of silly to do it that slow, but 
So we can go back again. Animate shared layout again is going to be the areas within it. It's all going to have the same animation. So this one is the crossfade. The last one that we had saw, um, I believe is this one, used spring. So it's kind of interesting to see that and compare. Um, actually, in that in fact, that spring wasn't even used on the type shared layout. Yeah, he's got an animate presence component here. And we can actually look in each of these if we wanted to like dig in. If you wanted to like dig into the to the GitHub, we can. But for now, I'm just kind of showing a few of the examples that he has on his site. So it takes in a list, it has a key, the layout, its value itself, A, B, or C, the key. And then we have items within it. So the, each item, this is the first one. So that is going to be layout A. And so if we go look at that layout A down here, you'll see layout A is flex, just like it says. And uh, layout B is going to be float. Let's see, so he's defined each of these layouts ahead of time. And he's basically just going through an if, an else if, for each layout to make it look exactly like he wants it to. And then around each div, he has a use motion uh, with the let motion. So let motion, use motion, let motion, use motion. And he has IDs for each of these. So when you transition from A to A over here, it knows where to go. And layout ID C goes to layout IC, etc., etc. So when you're transitioning between the three, it knows how they're all compared and, and used it together. And I believe that's provided via this uh, animate presence here. It's part of that section. So. So that's just a few of their examples. Let's go ahead and look a little more at their library. It's really cool. I highly recommend checking this out. Um, maybe, like I said, you can help me fix and figure out how to use the uh, use animation and use motion value. But let's just walk through a few more of their examples real quick. So motion. This kind of is the shorthand for it. This is the longer hand. You can use it on SVG elements and other motion ones. So here's the animation. This is the ones that I started to look at. So we have this turn here, and that's just the most basic. And then here's some of the other examples. Uh, so here's one where those are moving back up and down with all the children. So it's kind of cool. Here's an animation. This is going to kind of go between each different um, picture here. You can see it's a little choppy because it's loading for the first time, but then on the subsequent times, it's it looks fine. Um, this one is the use animation one. Um, this one was a little bit weird. Let me go ahead and click on their REPL example here. Let it have time to load. Oh, this was really cool. So it, it'll blow up and then reload itself. So I click it here. And this is one of the ones I said I couldn't get working properly in SvelteKit. But that is pretty dang cool. And life cycles. So he has different life cycle methods here uh, on update, on animation start, on animation complete. So you can actually go ahead and do different things depending on what is happening. So that's really nice if you want to tie into a specific point in your animation. He's got some, you can see a little bounce here. It's kind of a nice little uh, radio button toggle. These cards that kind of, kind of expand out. Here's with the layout IDs. scaling this one uh it's kind of neat you have the letters that expand out and you can go ahead and see how it all moves around it has some gesture support so again dragging etc 
Hovering. So we'll make the text bigger. So use it again, this is motion, while wow, focus, scale 1.5, and then again, the input is just going to use that motion. So it's pretty cool. This one will pan up and down to change the month. Motion value, again, this is one of the other ones that I couldn't get to work uh, on my machine or in my Silk app. You can see it changes while it's being, you know, dragged left and right. I don't know which one this does. Oh yeah, this one, if you go really fast, it's based off the velocity. So depending on how fast you're moving, it makes the colors go a little crazier. And this one, oh yeah, this one has the shadow move with it. That's really, really cool. It's a really neat effect. And here's the scrolling one. You can see the number of changes here as I'm scrolling. Um, he's got a couple of helpers here. This one, you can go ahead and change the colors of each of these. Use is present. So, you know, obviously these use is kind of the React hooks kind of thing. So use presence, use motion, use X. This is kind of like the React hooks kind of thing. So he's, he's got provides just a few of these uh, little things that are provided. Use reduced motion for people who have uh, less motion turned on. It might be nice to not offer motion for when your users don't want it. They're prone to having seizures, etc. You don't want to have them have a seizure. It's the layout example which I showed, and then here's all of the API documents and you can look at every single one of these and he has a pretty pretty good documentation here I found for all of the different um, options that are provided to you and you can kind of see what is available all in all um, I would definitely recommend taking a look at this library he's got a lot done he wants to on his checklist he wants to go ahead and have more documentation and a import strategy to reduce bundle size um, other than that, you know, buy him a coffee, help support him, check out his library. Um, seems pretty good. Go ahead and give him a star. Um, and yeah, I really like this. I'm going to try to figure out ways in my applications that I can kind of incorporate some of this stuff, but it's definitely very interesting and very cool. And I just wanted to say uh, nice work. Talk to you guys later.